Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, and we're going to be doing episode two of Cast Iron Cookware Answers, and we're going to be doing that coming right up. Okay, here we are again answering some more questions from my subscribers here at Cast Iron Cookware, and I just want to say I appreciate you so much. And if you are not a subscriber, right now would be a great time to subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, go ahead and hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss out on anything when it comes out. And also, if you have questions about cast iron cookware, this channel, or even me, don't be afraid to ask. Leave them in the comments on this video, and I will do my very best to answer your questions. Question number one comes from Rod Pruitt. I'm just going to read this. There is another channel that mentions that they are concerned about iron leaching into the food, but I think if it is well seasoned, it is mostly inert. What have you found? Uh, thank you for the question, and it is a good question. I've done a little bit of research on iron, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Unless you have hemochromatosis, then it's not going to be a problem. That, uh, you know, in that case, you don't need any extra iron. But the thing is, if your cast iron is properly seasoned, it is covered by a polymerization of the seasoning. The uh, oils have been polymerized and it has actually covered the cast iron to where it's between your iron and your food, and you're not going to be having any leaching of iron. I've heard people say that if you use iron skillets and cast iron cookware, then you're going to be helping yourself by adding iron to your diet. That's really not the case because of the polymerization. If you have a good seasoning, now if you're just cooking on bare iron, you're going to be getting a little bit of iron in your system. But if you are seasoning your cast iron well, then that's not going to be a problem. There's a coating that's impermeable and it's not going to be leaching through into your food. But if you have seasoning that has wore thin, there is a possibility of some iron getting into your food. But what I have learned, most people need iron in their diet. But I do know that if you are ingesting iron or even taking iron tablets or pills, you need a certain amount of vitamin C just for your body to metabolize the iron. So if you're iron deficient, cooking in cast iron may not help you that much. I don't believe it's going to be a problem unless you have a disorder like I mentioned before and you have problems that you need to make sure that you don't receive iron. In that case, as long as your cast iron cookware is seasoned very well, then you won't have a problem with it. Okay, let's get on to our next question. Question number two comes from Evelyn Horsley. She was actually the winner of her Dutch oven giveaway, so congratulations again, Evelyn. I'm glad that you received your cast iron intact and in good shape. So here we go. Evelyn asked, do you like oven stripping of pans? And if not, why? Well, that is a really good question because there are a lot of people out there still using their self-cleaning oven uh, cycle to clean their cast iron. Now, heat cleaning can be dangerous. The problem with cast iron, and we've heard this all of our lives, that why don't you just throw it in the fire? Now, when you throw a piece of cast iron in the fire or even on hot coals, you are heating that cast iron up really quickly. And a lot of times you're heating it up wherever it landed on the coals, on one side or the other or on the bottom. Uh, you just don't have an even heating. And what happens when it heats up really fast on one side, it, gets, it, it actually expands uh, to a small degree on the side where all the heat's coming in, and the other side is not expanding. And that's where you have warping. And that's when we run across pans that are called spinners or even pans that are cracked and warped. Now, a lot of times if you're cooking on the stovetop, I will say to take your pan and put it on the eye and let it heat up slowly. That way the sides will heat up as well. And I'll always say put it on low or even low to medium at most. And then when it gets warm, then you know you can crank the heat up a little bit because you're trying to bring up the temperature evenly. So even heat is the big problem with uh, throwing pieces in the fire. Now you say if you're putting it in the oven, then it's going to be heating up evenly, and that is the case. The next thing, the problem is, is the, the amount of heat you're actually putting in. 
Now, I know we season cast iron cookware at about 500 degrees with the type of oil that I use. So 500 degrees is kind of the top end of seasoning uh, cast iron, and that's pretty safe. I don't know the exact place where the seasoning breaks down. Most self-cleaning ovens operate at a cycle of 900 degrees. Now, if you have an older self-cleaning oven, the thermostat may not work as well, so you can fluctuate. I've heard of stories of ovens being measured at 1200 degrees, which is really high. So that's why I'm kind of afraid of it. Now, if you had a self-cleaning oven that maybe went to 600 degrees or 650 and it heated up evenly, then you may not have a problem. But control is the issue. If you can't control it, don't do it. That's one reason why I like the electrolysis uh, system and also the lye system is because you have absolute control. Well, as much as you can control a thing. So that's one reason why I stay away from it. Question number three comes from Judson Holt. And I'll read his question. Uh, I just took a one notch number eight lodge down to bare iron. Lie bath several days, then vinegar for a couple of hours. So a totally clean skillet after scrubbing in the cold water, after drying in the oven and seasoning first time. I noticed my white rag had a irony color to it. Is this iron coming off of the skillet because it's bare? It happened with many other pieces as well. That's a great question. And uh, I'm kind of curious, really you don't know unless you're there. I get a lot of questions, you know, people asking me things and unless I'm there or I see pictures or have a little more information, it's kind of hard to tell. You might be dealing with flash rust. A lot of times when you clean a piece of cast iron and you get it in the sink and you scrub it down and you, and you get all the gunk off and you're down to bare iron, if it dries in the air, or even if you dry it in the oven, you can get what is called flash rust. Uh, there is a way to stop flash rust from happening. And what I usually do, as soon as I dry it while I'm washing it, I wash it with hot as water as I can when I rinse. And then as soon as I get through rinsing, I'll dry it off immediately with paper towels and cloths or whatever it you use. Now don't use some good towels because you will you know, stain them up. I do have a black towel that I call it my stain-free towel, and it works great. Now it's getting stained, but nobody knows it. So I'll go ahead and I'll dry it as quickly as I can, and I won't put it in the oven to finish drying. Before it is even bone dry, there's probably still a bit of uh, moisture in it. I will either use buzzy wax, and I'll go ahead and cover it with buzzy wax and massage it in all of it, or I will spray it with some grapeseed oil and just go ahead and get it coated really quickly just before it ever has a chance to flash rust. And then I can let it set for a few days if I need to before I start seasoning. Now when I do get ready to season, I'll put it in the oven and let it get hot to about 250 degrees. I'll take it out and I'll wipe it down until it looks bone dry because too much oil can ruin your seasoning process. So, and the other thing is, if you are doing that process and you're not getting flash rust, Usually the first layer of cast iron is going to have some uh, residue come off the iron. What I like to do is I have a, an older wipe down cloth that I have used until I really got stained up. I'll use it for the first layer, mainly because you will get some staining. You will get some discoloration off of the iron. And then whenever I come out for my second layer, I'll use a fresh or my regular uh, cloth to... Uh, apply the seasoning. But I'll keep a backup old one for my first layer because that first layer is going to have a little bit of iron staining coming off of it, even if you don't have flash rust. So let's go on to our next question. Question number four comes from Real Time Video. And I'm going to read this in off. It says, as a precaution, some drain openers contain sodium hydroxide, which is lye, but may contain other ingredients as well. Make sure you purchase 100% sodium hydroxide. Red Devil Lye is a good brand that is 100% lye. I actually answered them in the comments and said I would pass this along because it is good information. So if you are using lye in your lye bath, always look at the ingredients and make sure that it is 100% lye. Thank you to Real Time Video for bringing this up. I appreciate it. Okay, question number five comes from Arkansas Fast Trail Riders. And they ask, 
when making an electrolysis tank and using a barrel, could you use a piece of concrete wire mesh and let it go all the way around the barrel as your anode? One thing about the anodes is whenever you're, you're building an electrolysis tank, your anodes are basically what we call sacrificial anodes. So it's going to be corroded and a lot of times you want to use stainless steel because it's easier to clean and it uh, lasts a lot longer and you don't have to worry about uh, it deteriorating quick. It usually takes a little more time for stainless steel to deteriorate. Now you can use these. The only thing I would say is watch out for any pieces of metal like uh, galvanized or anything that has any kind of oils on it that may not be good for you to have in food grade. One thing about stainless steel is most of the time it is food grade and because you're going to be eating off of your cast iron. So you don't want to use anything that has any harmful chemicals or any oils or paints or any kind of galvanized metal on it. Uh, you don't want that at all. The problem that I do see with this kind of mesh, a lot of time it looks rusty. And if you've ever done any construction work, and I've done plenty of construction work, a lot of times that wire that you use for your concrete, it's already rusty when you get it. So you may have a problem with it not working as good because it already has a certain amount of rust on it. So it may not last as long, but yes, you can use it as long as there's not any galvanized or any kind of coatings that's bad for you. So good question. Okay, question number six, and it is our last question. This is another one from Arkansas Trail Riders. It says, why do you not monetize your channel so you can make some money off of it and pay for your time and expenses? They are worth something. You do a great service doing what you do. Greatly enjoy all your vids. I appreciate that, Arkansas Trail Riders. I guess the short answer is my channel's not big enough yet. According to YouTube, in order to be a partner, you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 view hours. And I want to say thank you to my subscribers because you watch my videos and I appreciate it so much. I already have about 9,000 view hours, which is two and a half times what I need to get monetized. The problem is I got to have 1,000 subscribers as well, but I'm almost there. A little bit more and I'll be there probably before this video comes out. I'm at 917 currently. I have about 83 more to go. So hopefully I'll get those in this coming week. And I am looking into Patreon to kind of help with the finances. If you noticed, I've had quite a few issues with my camera equipment, my microphone, my software, my computer. Uh, so, you know, this is, I didn't realize how much I was going to be involved in when I started this. It just kind of took on a life of its own. I got ambitious and overloaded myself. So I'm going to try to stick to one a week and that will be on Fridays at five o'clock. Every now and then I may get a bonus video and throw it out there, but I don't want to have a lot of videos that you don't enjoy. I want to make sure they have quality, they have content, and they have information that you can get something out of. You are absolutely the best subscribers on YouTube. I really mean that. And uh, I'm very, very glad to have you guys supporting me. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. So thank you for being a part and watching the Cast Iron Cookwire channel.